housekeeping IT in the family who is Jared Kushner and how did he make his money? Ivanka Trump's husband and White House advisor probed by FBI over Russia links. Property mogul holds a key position in the White House advising his famous father-in-law. By Sarah K. Mowney and Amanda Devlin. 26th of May 2017, 11.29 a.m. Updated, 26th of May 2017, 7.38 p.m. Click to share on Twitter, opens in new window. Click to share on Facebook, opens in new window. Now. Comment. He is the wealthy real estate developer who is married to Ivanka Trump and has landed a top job at the White House. Jared Kushner, credited with helping his father-in-law get elected as U.S. president, is now being probed by the FBI over his meetings with Russians. Here's what we know about him. From Ivanka Trump, her husband Jared. Getty Images. 5. Jared Kushner pictured with wife Ivanka Trump and sister-in-law Tiffany. Who is Jared Kushner? What's his background? Born in 1981, 35-year-old Jared Kushner is the son of real estate developer Charles Kushner. He grew up in New Jersey, USA, and was raised as an Orthodox Jew. Jared graduated from Harvard University in 2003 with a degree in sociology. His admission to the elite university proved controversial, after a book by journalist Daniel Golden, also a Harvard graduate, suggested Kushner and his brother were given a place following a $2.5 million donation from their father. In 2007, Kushner graduated from New York University, where he earned graduate degrees in law and business administration. He married Donald Trump's eldest daughter Ivanka in 2009 after she converted to Judaism. The couple have three children, five-year-old Arabella, three-year-old Joseph and baby son Theodore. It puts him at the heart of the first family now running the White House. Fame fleeing it, stock, reality star turned President Donald Trump seen throughout the years. Fame flying it. 5. Ivanka and Jared have three children together. Does Jared Kushner have any influence over his father-in-law Donald Trump? In a word, yes, but it has already proved to be controversial. Jared Kushner has been named as a special advisor to the president, working alongside the chief of staff, Rians Priebus, and Trump's chief strategist, Steve Bannon. It's believed he will mainly focus on trade policy in the Middle East peace process. The 35-year-old millionaire will step down as boss of his family's real estate business. He will also have to resign as publisher of the New York Observer newspaper. Coming from a family known to support the Democratic Party, Kushner himself is said to have contributed more than $100,000 to the party up to 2006. The 35-year-old millionaire has been working on Trump's campaign from behind the scenes. AP. Associated Press. 5. The 35-year-old millionaire has been working on Trump's campaign from behind the scenes. But throughout Trump's campaign, Kushner oversaw all digital aspects, taking charge of his online and social media presence. He also helped as a speechwriter, coordinated visits and was asked to plan Trump's White House transition team. In fact, the New York Times dubbed him the quiet fixer in Trump's campaign after Corey Lewandowski was fired, and this level of influence seems set to continue. While Donald Trump spoke to President Obama at the White House two days after his election Kushner was pictured on the South Lawn speaking to Obama's chief of staff. Social media went into meltdown when little more than a week after Donald Trump's election Kushner and his wife Ivanka were pictured at an official meeting between the new president-elect and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. After Trump's inauguration Kushner was made a senior White House advisor and Ivanka was also given an office in the executive mansion. Democrats say Kushner's appointment breaches anti-nepotism laws because he is a family member of the president. His position in the White House did not need to be approved by Congress. Kushner's lawyers have reportedly said the couple are exempt from nepotism rules because the White House is not a government agency.
U.S. President-elect Donald Trump pictured with his son-in-law Jared Kushner who he has just been made a top advisor. Reuters 5. U.S. President-elect Donald Trump pictured with his son-in-law Jared Kushner who he has just been made a top advisor. What is Jared Kushner's his net worth? Businessman Kushner is a real estate investor who made $20 million while still a student at Harvard, where he bought and sold buildings in the area for fun. In 2006, he bought the New York Observer newspaper for $10 million using some of those earnings, one of a handful of papers to endorse Donald Trump in the presidential race. He's most well known for buying the office building at 666 Fifth Avenue at the age of 26 in 2007, which he purchased for a record $1.8 billion. In 2012, he also put in a bid to buy the Los Angeles Dodgers baseball team, but later withdrew it. Now, he is the principal owner of Gushner Properties, a role he has held since 2008 when his father who was convicted of tax evasion, illegal campaign donations and witness tampering, was spending a year behind bars. When his wealth is combined with that of his wife's they are worth $700 million. This figure was revealed when the White House released financial disclosure reports for 180 of its top staffers. Both Ivanka and Jared have been given advisory roles in the Trump administration. Manus X Machina, Fashion in an Age of Technology Costume Institute Go Exclusive Trump's son-in-law had undisclosed contacts with Russian envoy, sources. U.S. President Donald Trump's son-in-law and close advisor, Jared Kushner, had at least three previously undisclosed contacts with the Russian ambassador to the United States during and after the 2016 presidential campaign, seven current and former U.S. officials told Reuters. Those contacts included two phone calls between April and November last year. Two of the sources said. By early this year, Kushner had become a focus of the FBI investigation into whether there was any collusion between the Trump campaign and the Kremlin, said two other sources, one current and one former law enforcement official. Kushner initially had come to the attention of FBI investigators last year as they began scrutinizing former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn's connections with Russian officials, the two sources said. While the FBI is investigating Kushner's contacts with Russia, he is not currently a target of that investigation, the current law enforcement official said. The new information about the two calls as well as other details uncovered by Reuters shed light on when and why Kushner first attracted FBI attention and show that his contacts with Russian envoys Ergei Kislyak were more extensive than the White House has acknowledged. NBC News reported on Thursday that Kushner was under scrutiny by the FBI, in the first sign that the investigation, which began last July, has reached the president's inner circle. The FBI declined to comment, while the Russian embassy said it was policy not to comment on individual diplomatic contacts. The White House did not respond to a request for comment. Kushner's attorney, Jamie Gorelick, said Kushner did not remember any calls with Kislyaks between April and November. Mr. Kushner participated in thousands of calls in this time period. He has no recollection of the calls as described. We have asked, Reuters, for the dates of such alleged calls so we may look into it and respond, but we have not received such information, she said. White House senior adviser Jared Kushner listens during President Donald Trump's joint news conference with German Chancellor Angela Merkel in the East Room of the White House in Washington, March 17, 2017. Reuters, Jimberg. 1 9 left right in March. The White House said that Kushner and Flynn had met Kislyak at Trump Tower in December to establish a line of communication. Kislyak also attended a Trump campaign speech in Washington in April 2016 that Kushner attended. The White House did not acknowledge any other contacts between Kushner and Russian officials. Back Channel Before the election, Kislyak's undisclosed discussions with Kushner and Flynn focused on fighting terrorism and improving U.S.-Russian economic relations, six of the sources said. 
Former President Barack Obama imposed sanctions on Russia after it seized Crimea and started supporting separatists in eastern Ukraine in 2014. After the November 8 election, Kushner and Flynn also discussed with Kislyak the idea of creating a back channel between Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin that could have bypassed diplomats and intelligence agencies, two of the sources said. Reuters was unable to determine how those discussions were conducted or exactly when they took place. Reuters was first to report last week that a proposal for a back channel was discussed between Flynn and Kislyak as Trump prepared to take office. The Washington Post was first to report on Friday that Kushner participated in that conversation. Separately, there were at least 18 undisclosed calls and emails between Trump associates and Kremlin-linked people in the seven months before the November 8 presidential election, including six calls with Kislyak, sources told Reuters earlier this month. Two people familiar with those 18 contacts said Flynn and Kushner were among the Trump associates who spoke to the ambassador by telephone. Reuters previously reported only Flynn's involvement in those discussions. Six of the sources said there were multiple contacts between Kushner and Kislyak but declined to give details beyond the two phone calls between April and November and the post-election conversation about setting up a back channel. It is also not clear whether Kushner engaged with Kislyak on his own or with other Trump aides. How Kushner Came Under Scrutiny FBI scrutiny of Kushner began when intelligence reports of Flynn's contacts with Russians included mentions of U.S. citizens, whose names were redacted because of U.S. privacy laws. This prompted investigators to ask U.S. intelligence agencies to reveal the names of the Americans, the current U.S. law enforcement official said. Also in politics, Trump ends nine-day overseas trip with a flourish as trouble looms at home. McMaster says not concerned after Kushner back-channel reports. Kushner's was one of the names that was revealed, the official said, prompting a closer look at the president's son-in-law's dealings with Kislyak and other Russians. FBI investigators are examining whether Russians suggested to Kushner or other Trump aides that relaxing economic sanctions would allow Russian banks to offer financing to people with ties to Trump, said the current U.S. law enforcement official. The head of Russian state-owned Vnashekhanum Bank, Sergei Nikolaevich Gorkov, a trained intelligence officer whom Putin appointed, met Kushner at Trump Tower in December. The bank is under U.S. sanctions and was implicated in a 2015 espionage case in which one of its New York executives pleaded guilty to spying and was jailed. The bank said in a statement in March that it had met with Kushner along with other representatives of U.S. banks and business as part of preparing a new corporate strategy. Officials familiar with intelligence on contacts between the Russians and Trump advisers said that so far they have not seen evidence of any wrongdoing or collusion between the Trump camp and the Kremlin. Moreover, they said, nothing found so far indicates that Trump authorized, or was even aware of, the contacts. There may not have been anything improper about the contacts, the current law enforcement official stressed. Kushner offered in March to be interviewed by the Senate Intelligence Committee, which is also investigating Russia's attempts to interfere in last year's election. The contacts between Trump campaign associates and Russian officials during the presidential campaign coincided with what U.S. intelligence agencies concluded was a Kremlin effort through computer hacking, fake news and propaganda to boost Trump's chances of winning the White House and damage his Democratic opponent. Hillary Clinton. Additional reporting by John Walcott, Warren Strobel and Phil Stewart in Washington.